Film Podcast. Here with Arceline talking about paint correction tips to avoid when you're correcting the paint of your car and you start seeing micro marring and you never get to an ending result. There's a lot of complex details that we that you can you know change during this process of correcting a paint with a buffer buffing your car and we're gonna go all over that arsenal is here <laughs> hey guys um yeah it's gonna be a good podcast man we're gonna we're gonna break it down make it simple and it's not gonna be too long so, <laughs> so it'll, it'll, it'll it'll get to the point hopefully pretty quickly <laughs> for once it's funny because i listen back to your podcast we and always we always go it's not gonna it, that's always the introduction it's not gonna be too long it's gonna be five minutes it's gonna be five minutes, minutes later, <laughs> 45 minutes later we're repeating the things that we said in the first fi five minutes <laughs> but yeah let's get to it and we're let's do it Welcome to the Wings Mobile Detailing Business and Automotive Podcast. The only podcast that will guide you on how to start and grow six-figure companies. As our team expands from one business location to worldwide domination, you will get step-by-step -step insights from a millennial franchiser and franchise owner with your host, Andre Mezzalera. Correction. Avoiding micro marines, what happens, how to get the paint to a deeper gloss when you're correcting, how to avoid when you're going through a process of correcting the paint, removing scratches from the surface of the paint uh, with a compound and then steps of polish with the dual action buffer. Uh, what do you do if you run through problems? You know, the speed of buffer differs a lot. So we're gonna go through all over that wet sanding. So, so just so that we can actually stay on track here yeah and go step by step so let's start you know off with let's say wet sanding or when the car needs to be wet sanded for example there's not really orange peel right right yeah that we need to orange. um yeah so i i think i think the first step will all with with any of these steps that we're going to go over um is to try to have a measure of the clear coat try to have a gauge of it so especially mm -hmm. especially if you're going to wet sand it um it's really yeah. important to know how much clear coat you have to play with, um, but yeah, it's paint correction is one of the one of the hardest things you can do in detailing. One of the yeah. and one of the most profitable things you can do in detailing. So, yeah, we can we're gonna break it down and uh, wet sanding is number one. What wet sanding? I think that when when it's needed to wet sand, just to go over quickly over that is either when the car has deeper scratches, not too deep to the point where you can feel. Right. with your fingernails because then it's too deep you need to repaint it uh but but where it's there's like let's say have even sore marks that are heavy on the paint and it's like okay only uh wet sanding would be able to take care of it because it's more abrasive than a compound yeah. you know then we start off with removing orange peel yeah you know things like that but normally we only work when with compound you know we take more time just so we, that we don't have to go to the wet sanding once we're in compound, you know, starting to compound the car, because uh, that's what we're going to mainly be talking about. That's the stages of paint correction, what it entails. Um, then the compound, you we normally what we use, we use microfiber pad, the mm -hmm. microfiber cutting pad. Yeah. Uh, with the, we, the product we personally use is the Meguiar's uh, cutting compound. And then we go, it's a, it's a brown, a brown product and then we go with the orange pad with the Maguire's finishing polishing and then we go with a black pad again uh, but with a HD speed because it, it's a it's a finer polisher to mm -hmm. finish off better and the black pad because it's more fine it's also at a protection a little bit of protection on there yeah uh, on it obviously we'd like to follow up with another layer of protection sealant uh, if necessary yeah. but Unless we're doing ceramic afterwards. If we're doing ceramic, we do the first two steps, microfiber, orange pad, finishing polishing. And then the last step, we don't use HD speed because it has seal on it. We don't want seal. We do, we do with the black pad, another yeah. polishing, uh, finishing polishing. We use the same product, yeah. finishing po product. But there, there is different like pads that we can use depending on the car. Like you said, the depth of the paint, uh, it differs a lot. And then the process of doing paint correction with the compound, right? Yeah. It's uh, we can start with doing the compound on the microfiber pad to prime the pad. So all those little details, it affects, uh, it affects the result that you're gonna get and had, you avoid headaches. If you first start off, organize. 
Yeah. You have a table there. You have enough products. You know, we have enough microfiber pads mm -hmm. to do a car. What do you think we need? Like about just to be safely like I'd say four, four or five, yeah, four or five microfiber yeah. pads, and then obviously we can wash it afterwards. Uh, and you have the isopropyl alcohol eraser by Carpro to remove. So we have all this stuff organized. Then you have the orange pad. You have about two orange pads. I don't need more than two because microfiber you need more. Yeah. The reason you need more microfiber, uh, just to be ready, is because when you do like one entire panel, you're gonna use the brush in between to clean the pad, right? It clogs up really and, easily too yeah. com compared to the compared to the other ones. Um, but yeah, just to just to go back on go back to wet sanding really quickly. It's uh, you have to be I was really too careful. Ahead, I think. <laughs> what is it? I was jumping too ahead. <laughs> No, I was gonna. I was just gonna mention this that um, wet sanding is is obviously the most abrasive, so it is the most dangerous. You can very easily burn the paint on a car or just completely remove the clear coat and damage it. Um, so you have to know what grit you're using. You have to know how much paint or how much clear coat you're uh, you're working with. Um, but just to I guess go over the grits really quickly. Um, the most abrasive thing you can put on a car is. Um, like a very low number wet sand, um, well, let's say yeah, 500, 500 right? yeah, yeah, 500, and then the higher it goes, like 2,000, 3,000, it's finer cut. So it, it almost gets closer to the compounds once it gets high yeah. up there, so it's not super abrasive. But yeah, I always start, if this is for a super deep scratch, right? Yeah. We start with, you know, 500, again, measure the clear coat first, but um, you start with 500, then you move your way up to 1,000, 2,000, yeah. you know, compound, polish it, and then it'll, it'll be perfect, paint yeah. thin. Um, but yeah, so wet sand, compound, polish, and... Um, Polishing and to finish off. Yeah, to, to finish yeah. everything off. And then we'll add a layer of protection, whatever. It's either wax, sealant, ceramic yeah. coating, whatever uh, we're going over. But um, also there's different types of compounds. We, we use um, one or two different types, but... There's a lot out there. They have they come with different grits as well. They're basically liquid um, sandpaper that come yeah. with. Some of them are you know thousand or like fifteen hundred grit. Some of them are two or three thousand grit. So they cut the the compound itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have it's the cutting the, action yeah, of of wet sand, of but it's in liquid sand. form. Yeah, and they have it, some abrasiveness. And exactly. Stuff. Yeah, so it's a little bit rough. Cuts into the clear coat, and when you're wet sanding or compounding, you're gonna leave a lot of, a lot more minor scratches yeah um you're gonna you're gonna be getting rid of the deep one but you're causing a lot of minor ones yeah so then now for the guys that already know this bro like let's say for the guys already familiar with pink reaction detailers yeah, yeah. and they are actually doing the service and they run through problems they want to avoid problems like that yeah. and obviously when we're doing details we're not going to be able to go over all the problems that may happen you know it's right. very complex and it's very so much too depending on the car it and is stuff there's like that. a there's a lot like even the speed of the buffing when you're the ending yeah. process yeah. the speed one speed one more rpm you're you are you know you're making a huge difference on the paint even even temperature plays a part if you're going yes. for perfection there's so many things that come into play um yeah. if you're if you're striving for perfection but yeah and having a good result again to me like that's how i see it, it always starts with okay you have everything there organized bam uh you have clean microfiber pads because why because a lot of the problems may happen when you have 30 pads and you're doing the car you don't have enough yeah. and you're in the middle of compounding a car and it's not working anymore why because your pad that you have available mm -hmm. they're all squeezed have been overused mm -hmm. especially microfiber because it gets stuck and that has a it ha that has a huge impact on the results yeah if you're if you continue to polish to compound a car with a dual action buffer whatever it is and the pad is uh too used it, it, like you're, you're not gonna get the results out it's gonna it's gonna mess up it's gonna either create more micro marrings or it's not gonna cut evenly mm -hmm. when you're doing the compound you're gonna see an even uh scratched hazed surface evenly uh, that happens it can actually it's especially in black cars yeah and if you have more if you're changing make sure your pad is clean because it's better for you to spend more money on pads than to than to like spend more time yeah. on something that's not working. But that's one of the factors why you're, you're compounding the car, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, th there's all the, yeah, there's also um, oh, I just lost my chain of thought completely. <laughs> um, One of the things that I also like was thinking about is that we ran through when we're removing the towels. When we're removing, obviously before you do this, I think I skipped one step is the preparation of the paint. Oh yeah. Before we compound the car, we make sure the paint is completely washed. Even Iron X, if you can, do whatever methods you can do. Clay bar, obviously, because you're going to remove. Why? Because when you're starting off correcting a paint, it's a used paint, obviously, mm -hmm. and it's going to be oil. It's going to be old waxes, old whatever oils, polishing oils, residue, dirt on it. You want to use Iron X to remove it, because when you go to polishing, it's going to work much better because you're having the pad and the not working against you know polishing yeah. material right right bare paint yeah. um and after that's clean uh so th after that's clean and we're doing that uh we notice a lot that the, the paint for example it somebody was coming in <laughs> the, the paint for example was i thought i thought the guy was coming <laughs> uh in between we're polishing and if you see that that's what happened was happened with us is when we polish once and we're removing buffing off and we're removing the product uh, if you're using a, a dirty towel as well mm -hmm. use clean microfiber towels to remove with yeah. low pile yeah because then if you're using dirty towels you're gonna remove with oils from the towels and that makes a difference if you want to get it to perfection or get a good pen correction done get the towels clean as I said at the beginning yeah. I have, I have multiple uh, towels handy um, also, when you're compounding and polishing, it's really important. We, we learned this the hard way when we first started doing paint correction. It's really important to have eraser, something that will remove all the oils mm -hmm. when you're compounding. So you, Because compounds, polishes, they'll leave oil residue on top of the paint. Yeah. So a lot of times there is like very minor swirls and things like that that are getting hidden. They're still there but they're getting hidden by all these compound polish oils sitting on top so it's really important to use an eraser every time you're done with the panel to see what the what pure paint looks like without any any oils on top yeah and we learned this the hard way <laughs> we did it was, we, this is a few we, years ago but we did on the r8 that we did we were polishing non-stop for many hours and every time we'd go with the polish again try different pads we try different products and it was just it was not getting the haze out and, uh, and then the result, we see that it was, it was oils on the paint and we tried the first and second one, there was oil there and nothing was working. Yeah. There was oil, we didn't use isopropyl alcohol. So yeah guys, the towels has a huge effect on, <laughs> that we use, a huge effect on the, uh, uh, on the results when we're removing it, just by itself. And just like you mentioned the eraser, I don't think we covered that. Yeah. You, whenever you're removing the compound, you polish the car and you're removing the, removing the compound, using the isopropyl alcohol the eraser on the towel that you're actually removing just spray it on there and always use that yeah. it's not like you're spraying on the entire car every time mm -hmm. some people recommend it to do just before you apply the ceramic but no like have that with you it's an isopropyl alcohol and it's going to help to remove any oils from the first time that you compound so when you go with the second step yeah it's actually going to uh, remove all the oils and then you're working again working back on the bare paint and actually tackling these scratches and the microfiber cutting pad that you're using cutting polisher it's not working on top of oils yeah I think that makes real sense yeah. the cleanliness of the pad cleanliness of microfiber using isopropyl alcohol that's gonna affect and going slow too so sometimes if you like polishing with the compound you go super fast mm -hmm. it, it tends to you, 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 especially with a dual action buffer I'm not talking about rotary a dual action buffer if you go really fast with it it's gonna be worse at the end so really take your time like I tell the guys like take your time and go slow because it's better you're gonna get a better result because if you do the three-step polish twice afterwards and you realize that there's still like some uneven scratches on areas that means because you either went too fast with the first step and then you have to go all back again. So first step is crucial that you go slow with a speed setting around five on a, on a dual action buffer. Not too fast because if you go too fast, you're going to create too much micro marrings, those tiny curtain scratches. Looks like curtains if you look hazy, against the sun. Yeah, yeah the, the, the weird type of haze. You, you're going to create haze, but you yeah. know, 
uh, so go go slow do it by section um, or two by two because if you go on a bigger section by the time you go back two passes that you're doing the product's gonna be drying out and then it's not gonna work again yeah and you might want to so taking your time is another crucial point on the first step Especially a really good tip yeah because I think one, one of the one of the uh, most common mistakes I see is that people try to do big sections because they, they think it's gonna get done faster or they don't want to apply product again and do another two by two so that's really important to do as smaller sections and and wipe it off using an eraser also another big mistake that I was going to point on is um, is lighting um, lighting is yeah. really important yes. um, there, there's a lot of light lightings out there but it's more there's expensive ones cheap ones but it goes um, it's, it's just supposed to be as close to yes. the sun as possible super important yeah um, it's part of the preparation of having things organized uh, because lighting as well, when you take the car in the sun, and it's, it's going to reveal a lot of stuff that you didn't see before. It's going to be suck. It's going to suck. It's going to be a nightmare. But yeah, that's that's the compound part, bro. And then when we jump straight out to the polishing section, uh, the pads on the compound as well. We normally use the microfiber pad, right? There's we can use the orange pad, orange cutting pad to do the compound instead of microfiber. I I just personally prefer the microfiber because it cuts deeper. Yeah, you know, uh, it, it cuts deeper and it's better. If you're doing a full paint correction, the deeper you want to cut, the better correction. But the more you have to take your time finishing it off with the polishers. Mm -hmm. And so, but you know, if we're gonna get more to close to perfection, whatever cuts deeper, if needed, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You don't want like to like cut too deep if the you know if, if there's a need. It's not a need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but let's run to the another problems that can occur if if you jump. Uh, to do a polishing for example uh, let's say our, our steps we get then we get a a orange pad right with the finishing polishing for my wires mm -hmm. and we prime the pad as well same with the microfiber pads prime is another important point to avoid from uneven cutting surface so if you want to cut it even that's the point of pink correction Put a lot of product at first on the pad and make sure all the fibers from the microfiber or the foam is covered. Massage with your hand and then go in the paint and then following up, you don't use too much product. So let's say we're doing polishing now. Uh, the, the pad is primed, the first pass slowly as well. The speed setting around four and a half to five. If you go too fast on the speed, uh, you can also create micro marrings as we said. But priming the pad is important and then you put just a little bit of drops like three or four uh, dime sized drops right yeah. uh, on the pad that's not too soil and it's not too dry and you can tell you can have a feeling okay is this too dry is the pad getting too wet and too soil because if you're using too much product you're also gonna waste pads because then it's gonna get too soil and then it's not gonna work because a lot of oils old oil is gonna be stuck in there it's also something that I had to learn the hard way I, I thought the more the better <laughs> I thought yeah. the more was gonna cut faster it was gonna get everything done quicker but um, this is when I when, when I first started but no it, yeah it messes up your pad really quickly <laughs> you yeah. have to it just gets really gunky um, and it doesn't cut even whatsoever and it's really hard to work a product in though the whole point of compound and polish is to work it in slowly and let it do its job because it, the, the product itself the liquid is getting finer and finer and it's breaking yeah. the paint down slowly so you can't you can't just do one or two passes usually you have to work it in and um, that's yeah that's also another important important thing that I wanted to point out and you let the machine do its job if you're using a dual action buffer you're yeah. not using a rotary where you go up and down fast uh, the, the when they come out with a dual action buffer even if you're using to, it to cut you're letting the machine do the work you go slow we put about five pounds of pressure in it if you put too much pressure again it's not gonna spin but yeah. people should know that you know and then it, you, you go slowly let the machine do the work just like you said you're not speeding through it uh, and you're correcting it well if sometimes we notice that uh, still let's say it's still not working let's say you did a compound and and you go with the second part with the orange pad and the polishing and still like not removing you know the, the compound from the paint it's still not removing the haziness from the paint 
uh, even after you went through all the process, all the towels are clean, you don't have any oils and it's actually cutting directly to it, the pad is new and it's still not working, that's when you can play around sometimes and see, okay, is it the polishing that's not working out or is it the compound that I, it's not completely compound. So for you to see if the problem is on the compound, is for you to see the car if it's equally hazed. The, what the compound is going to remove is not going to be light swirl marks. It's not going to be the hazeness because the compound is creating haze. So if it is equally hazed, you did a good job on the compounding. If not, if you look before you start polishing, if you look that, okay, there's just some scratches here and there, you're looking different angles, like scratches that you feel like it's not hazed equally, that's when you know that it's still going to be there after you finish off the polish. You know, it's going to look bright and glossy, but it's still going to be there because that was the compound's job to remove. And you can go a little bit deeper or whatever. But when you get to the polishing section, to the polishing part, uh, you, and it's still not working, still not cutting, and you realize, okay, the compound has been done well, there's no scratches, equally hazed, and it's not getting the haziness off, and you're there with the orange pad with the finishing polish, and still not getting the haziness off, you c maybe it's not it's not strong enough. Maybe it's not brace abrasive enough to remove the scratches that you create, the haziness that you created with the compound, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like that happens with the car before, where you know, like we use the orange pad, the polishing, but the product polishing is not as abrasive as a compound. Right. Uh, s sometimes you have to change it up, change up your system a little bit. So, like, like Andre's talking about when, especially when you have some um, very noticeable hazing being caused by the compounding. If you're using a compound with a microfiber pad, that cuts pretty deep. Um, and mm -hmm. if you're using it fast speed, especially, a lot of times you can't just go and polish right after. You might have to do a second round of compound quickly yeah. um, with a softer pad and then polish it so it'll be a three-step process instead of instead of compound polish it'll be compound deep compound medium and then yeah. polish basically and then polish yeah uh, to, to to get all that haze off to finish off better the first step yeah. and it's funny because sometimes we can finish off better using the same pad the same product right <laughs> the way you do the passes as well so let's say when we were compounding before we used to okay it's going to be on speed setting five we're going to use this pad and we're compounding it with this pressure and this speed on when you're going across the paint. Uh, but if the, you do about three passes in the same spot with compound, but if you go in the last pass, instead of you doing all the same thing again, but instead you lower the pressure where you put more pressure in the paint, right. you lower the pressure, don't put too much pressure, and a little bit more product, more comp same product, compound product, uh, and you lower the pressure, it goes slowly. And the third pass, you know, just go right away. You're going to the third pass again, and you lease out on the pressure. Maybe put a little bit more product. That's going to actually help. The compound itself is going to actually help to finish more because you're actually cutting it less deep, and it's going to be better for when you come back with the polishing. Yeah. Uh, the, the, part. The, the, polish, the polish shouldn't be going after, like, deep hazes or anything like that. Exactly, it's, it's supposed yeah. to. It, the car is supposed to be almost sort of done when you're when you're going to start polishing like there shouldn't be anything super noticeable when you start polishing because yeah if you're, if you're going for that mirror finish um, and there is going to be haze though bro. there's like, no there's definitely going to be haze, haze not scratches sometimes there's there's the haze is too deep for the polish to, to get out so like True. um that's why i like to use personally like i just use the orange pad yeah on the yeah. polishing because the orange pad is a, it's actually a pad for cutting yeah and i'm using a polisher so so i'm actually using the, the heavy pad to actually cut through the yeah. compound if there's more haze so that I don't have to take too much time on the compound section finishing off yeah and, and, uh, and again all of this that we're talking about back and forth it, it varies a little bit depending on yeah. the situation depending on the type of paint and how bad the scratches are so your system might vary a little it bit might. from 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 car to car but building that foundation though yeah. of having, having things the clean basics, yeah. is do the, these basics are crucial it's going to help you a lot it's not going to be a nightmare to you uh, but th these are certain tips that you can also take if things are going wrong, you know. Uh, the RA that we were doing, you know, we were polishing, like we said before, uh, two minutes ago. I'm going to repeat myself like I like to do. <laughs> and realize, you know, it's not working, it's not polishing, it's not polishing. We realize we're in between compounding again, compounding again, and polishing, 
we're not using the isopropyl alcohol. We're just removing with a clean towel. Yeah. And all the oils we've been working on it. After we use the isopropyl alcohol, we're removing the polish, and we went again to polish. It worked again. Like the scratches would start to disappear. Yeah. Because yeah. like we're polishing on top of all the oils that we, we created. Um, I'm sure a lot of detailers who are listening to this relate to yeah. having having a situation like that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes a lot. paint and correction. It, the reason we're giving tips for this is just because the process can be tricky sometimes. Because of we're going through it <laughs> right yeah, now. It's this, we lose confidence sometimes. Sometimes like, no joke. you think it's a five or six hour job. It turns into a 12 hour job. Just, yeah. just you know. Um, and you we start to look, okay, what am I doing wrong? Why is this not yeah. working? And <laughs> and it's, sometimes it's hard to really figure it out what happened. It really is. Uh, there are some tips that we can give, and I'm sure detailers that are listening, they It comes uh, with experience, but yeah, I mean, it could, it could be anything. Sometimes it's yeah. a towel that's making very minor scratches on there um, when yeah. you're drying it off. Sometimes sometimes when you're, when you're done doing the paint correction, everything looks great, and you go to wash the car before you ceramic coat it, your washing process might not issue you, you have to be careful scratches, and then yeah, yeah you might cause a few more scratches as well so yeah um yeah it, it can be a it can be a lengthy process but yeah i mean uh hopefully these tips help it, it hopefully does and those uh it just to cover it up like more downfalls that can happen that people can avoid uh what can create problems uh when you're, you're polishing the car and then it went with the orange pad you know, you can play around with those pads. Uh, but just so you have an idea, when you're on the orange pad and doing polishing or the second stage after you compound the entire car, you should already start seeing the perfect and the lighting, perfect. Glossy, no, you know, like a, the result of the second pass that you do on the polishing, the second stage, uh, not second pass, second stage, you know, mm -hmm. compound the entire car and then you polish the entire car. You should, because the orange pad is a little bit aggressive, and it's gonna remove the, it's gonna remove the heavy oxidation from the compound, mm -hmm. the orange pad and the polish. It's gonna remove that, and it's gonna see the gloss, but it's still gonna leave micro marring in there that you might not see in the light. And but you're supposed to be seeing the cars like, man, this is glossy, this is nice, because you're not gonna see swirl marks anymore, you know, supposedly, if you're going through the steps and you try a mirror. But if you take the car to the sun, that's why it's important the third step and to do it slowly, this two steps. You're gonna probably be like, okay, I'm good, let me, let me, I'm good with the car now. But if you take the car to the sun with these two steps, you're not seeing anything, and the sun hits it, you're gonna see the tiny little scratches and haziness that the second polish created, which you weren't able to see in the light, which is the micro marring. Mm -hmm. As when you pass the light on top of the car or the sun, you're gonna see kind of a curtain wave. Very, very, because those are tiny, tiny scratches. Yeah. And it's not nice, it doesn't look good in the sun. You might see it looks good in the dark and under, underneath the light. That's why it's important. Now, what is gonna correct that? If you got to the point, props to you, it means that, okay, the deeper scratches are gone. If you don't see deeper scratches, it means the compound is done well. The second stage is done well because you don't see any oxidation on the car. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do now is finish off the car. And the finishing process can be a nightmare <laughs> or it can be easy. But at least, okay, you went through the second, the two steps and you know that the paint is ready. You know, you did it well. You don't have to repeat it. Repeat that. Those scratches. Now it's about you going with a more soft pad and maybe keep, still keep the polished product that you have because polish is polish, you know, they have a little bit heavier polish, but the heavier ones are compound. So still keep the polish, but you want to do what? A lighter one because there are lighter scratches and you remove that another stage should be the last stage. Some, sometimes those lighter scratches are the hardest things to get out yes. because it's, they're just, it's, it's so particular. Um, yes. And, and it, you know, <laughs> If you're if you're going and going and it, you know it's if it doesn't uh, become perfect, just just pick up a baseball bat and hit the car. Um, you can't you can't really do anything. You, yeah, you, just, you, you could just drive the car into the wall at that point. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we've gone through so many frustrations where we're in the last just, step. Just repaint it. <laughs> and it wasn't just perfect. Like it was never getting to perfect. And but what we did just to go over it, what some things that you can do that is pro that can solve the problem is you know you're gonna go with a soft pad a black pad that's what we use a black pad 
and the HD speed because it's very thin and finishes off better and it fills up some spots as well so but Oreo is a black pad in the polishing the light polish and the the haziness that you see the micro mark starts to come out mm -hmm. if it still doesn't which happened many times with us and again repeating the process cleaning it with isopropyl alcohol and the finishing polish from Maguire is still not getting it off there are polishing products that is very much less abrasive it's barely there some people even it's crazy but some people who I saw a video the guy wanted to get the paint to perfection and the abrasiveness from the finest polish was still ab too abrasive to where I wasn't getting out the micro <laughs> he used water because water technically on the properties has some abrasiveness well, yeah. in the water he used the water with the very fine polishing pad I mean he was looking for crazy perfection to remove any sort of minor mirror finish mirror finish scratch residue that created from the last polish yep but obviously when we're connecting the paint we don't have to go with that you know but use we can use a lighter polish product go slow in the paint and not the speed set it may, maybe you decrease the speed setting on the buffer if you're doing using a dual right. action buffer for polish which we, you're probably gonna have to use if you do the buffing with very light and it's like why is the micro more not coming out and you're doing speed setting five on the buffer that is the reason why you're gonna create more micro more you have to like lower the speed and that happened before the black card that we did BMW yeah. we actually used a, uh, a speed and setting five and then okay why is it not coming out we used the speed and setting four and went slower finish off